Hello and welcome. I'm Tim and this is Tim B at Sea, Caribbean edition this time. So here we are in uh, beautiful Puerto Rico. We're actually coming from Guayania and we've gone up the North Shore and uh, now we are inbound San Juan Harbor. And so uh, we're towing right now and uh, you're going to see us uh, flip around and uh, get alongside this thing and put it into the dock. So right here you have a view of me, oops it just changed, but that was a view of me in the doghouse, this is a view looking forwards or straight ahead, and uh, it's late in the afternoon so we are headed into the sun, which means we are kind of westbound there, into San Juan Harbor, here back in the doghouse, and you can see my assist tug is following the barge, this is looking at a view from the upper wheelhouse down to kind of show you a more of an aerial shot I guess you could say, but uh, so, so we usually tow this thing at about five layers out, or I don't know, uh, what's that, 1,500 feet behind us, something like that. And uh, we do that because there's a lot of swell, and the weight of the wire acts that makes what we call a cantonary, and that's the uh, a, a curve in the wire. And uh, as the wire starts to slow down, 3.3, .3. got another about five minutes or so to the center of the turn basin there. Very good. As, as the barge and the tug might be out of step going in between the waves, the weight of the wire acts as a shock absorber and goes up and down. So as you come into to shallow water like a harbor, you have to start sh uh, shortening up. You'll see me switching back so the when this video started, I was probably at two lays or maybe two and a half okay, layers. Oh, right here, and so. I'm slowly sucking in the wire all the time here. All right. I was really fortunate. Uh, Captain John had agreed to work over a week so that he could help me out with the paperwork and show me the different places and how we do things down here and so he's the guy who's talking to me on the radio he's in the lower house where I'm in the back in the dog house and right now he's calling out sp yes, sir. He's, he's calling out speeds to me so what I'm trying to do is when you're towing you can't stop the barge you have to let the barge slow down on its own so I'm slowing the barge down and while I'm doing that I start picking up the wire as I'm doing it and getting the wire. You can hear the air throttles, the, the, the air controls for the winch that's making that noise there. And now in order to continue to slow the barge down you'll see me rotating between one engine and then the other engine because I, I only want to go, I don't want to use, you know, two engines in clutch or minimal power will be still pulling the barge too fast. But if I use one engine all the time, it will start to push me off to one side. So you'll see me go from one engine in clutch, and then I put that neutral, put the other engine in clutch, and it kind of wiggles me back and forth. So now I'm down to 2.4 knots, and uh, getting it slowed down all the time. I've told John where, where to look at the chart, uh, where I want to be when I round up, and, and uh, he had told me that it was just so much further ahead, and uh, so we'll continue and listen along. Yeah, we've only got uh, about three minutes to the center there, we'll see. Three minutes down the road, we'll get ourselves clear of that Coast Guard station there. All right, in three minutes, you, you want me to round up on this, right? Yes, that'd be about perfect. Yes, sir. All right. Give me a one minute. <laughs> you can play the two-minute warning. Okay. And there it is. So about three minutes away, we'll be right where we want to be. And so it's kind of a balancing act. I have to continue to keep towing, um, um, but if I... It, but I need to keep pressure off of the wire 
so that the barge continues to slow down. So I've got three minutes to have the barge run, run, run out of energy. It doesn't have to come to a complete stop, but it has to slow down because the only way I can stop it is by flopping on it and then driving against it. And you'll, you'll probably see that here as time goes by. But you should start noticing that the, the barge is getting closer and closer to us as I keep taking in wire. And I can wind this in quickly if I want to, but I know that I've got three. If I wind it in quickly, the speed of the winch will act as, you know, that, that that's the same as me putting pressure on with the engines. And right at two knots. So, so now I've got it down to two knots. All right, beautiful. And, uh, so, so... By bringing the winch in really slowly, I can still reduce the speed of the barge by reducing the speed of the tug even more. But right here, we've sped up things just a little bit more, just because it uh, just kills a lot of time, as you can see. But you can see it's getting closer and closer. Okay, so now it's time to go. I'm ready to round up on the barge, and as you can see, I'm coming hard over. And uh, you'll see what I end up doing here is. Right now, I'm starting to back on that inboard engine. So I'm backing on my port engine, and I'm coming ahead on my forward engine. There, you can see it from the aerial view a little bit better look at this. And the, the key to doing this is that when we start doing this, you know, when we're new at it, we get, we get scared of getting run over by the barge, and you end up getting way too far away from the barge. So there's... <laughs> like with everything in this line of work, it's a balancing act. You have to be, you have to stay as close to the barge as you can, but you don't want to get run over by the barge at the same time. So you have to be a little careful. But right here, we've got basically perfect conditions. The wind is blowing, but the wind doesn't really matter because the the barge is loaded, so it's not going to go anywhere when it's loaded. Meaning most of the barge is underwater right now. So the part that's affected by the wind, the, the barge weighs so much, it doesn't really matter. But right now I'm sucking in on the winch, sucking in on the medium, I'm, I'm winding up the winch more, and uh, slowly bringing, bringing us around. So when we get done, we'll be what we call heads and tails here. There's a picture of what I'm actually seeing. And you can see we're still making way on the barge. And All right, Chief. I'm, uh... I'm gonna try to hold her here, but keep an eye on that wire. Can you up a little bit more? Okay, so the, the the chief is working on deck for me right now. All right, I'll, there there he I'm is. I'm out of gear here, so just let it just fetch up for a second before you start working on it. So so he goes over there and. All right, that's good. Do your thing. And what he has to do is he has to put a line through the thimble of the pennant on the barge. That way he can tie that line off and then I can relax the tow wire and then he can disassemble it and then let the line go. All right, so Chief, before we do this, I'm just gonna clutch, I'm gonna try to slow this down a little bit, all right? So the reason why I'm telling the Chief that is because he's working on deck. I'm gonna spin it a little bit, but... And I don't want, if, you know, by putting pressure on it, I'm gonna be putting pressure on the wire. If that wire jumps, it could cut him in half. So what I'm really doing is telling him to stay away from the wire while I slow the barge down. You can hear the engines coming up here. Now if you look, you're looking at the bow of the barge and the stern of the tug. The barge is still making like half a knot straight ahead. And I'm putting all this extra power, pushing against it, trying to slow it down. So I've gone from... I guess a knot now down right. to point eight, so I'm slowing it down a little bit more and more. That's looking out the front window. You see I have a cis tug there. So if something goes wrong, I have somebody there to help me. Down to half a knot. There. Now I'm down to half a knot. Alright. Wanna take it down a little bit more and then stop her? We can work with half a knot. We're good. We got her stopped nice and all right, Chief, I'm going to back up and just let it settle in before you start working on that, all right? Now, keep in mind that, that, that I'm working with the engineer and the captain from the other hitch. So these are these are not people that are on my crew, and even, and my crew is still really new to me now. Um, they've since come on the boat, 
but it takes a while before everyone knows their moves and all that. So it's really important that I let everyone know what I'm doing and keep them. Yeah, look out, chief! It's gonna come at you. So right now I'm telling him to get away from the wire because when it comes when it comes tight, it could jump at him. All right, better safe than sorry, right? And it looks like I, I may have been just a little bit too careful there, so that uh, I had him get away from it and it, the wire didn't jump. But I said they're better safe than sorry. So right now, what he does is he's put a line through the thimble of the bridle, and then he has uh, taken off the nut off of the shackle that my tow wire is on. I've relaxed the tow wire. Now he's pulling the pin out. All right, John, he's letting it go. I'm going to have you steer around into the notch while he makes up the bush gear, all right? All right, so now the only thing that's connecting us is that soft right, line that he yours, put man. in between in, that, that he used to let the line go. So he let the soft line go, but it, it seems to have gotten pinched on itself right here. And so I'm telling him to get out of there. We'll just use the engine. We just put it in gear. It should come right out. Yeah, Mike, let the, let the boat do the work. We're coming ahead here shortly. Here we go. Let's take the work mark. Stop the line. Yeah, yeah. Here we go, though. All right, you're all free. Now, Captain John is in the lower wheelhouse, and uh, he's going to drive around and get it in the notch while the chief and I set up the push gear. There we go. He gets around into the notch. And you can see why we wanted the barge stop because we have to let everything go and we won't have any control right, of it. Tim, and then we come around and get the notch. And uh, Mike, if you would, just give Tim a thumbs up. We're not looking on the stern there. He's pulling on him. So now it's right behind that head. So, okay, so the the soft push gear, the synthetic lines, the Amstel Blue there, goes around these round things right, that we so call ships. Start up? There are rollers, Mike. And it's really important that before I heave up with the strength of the winch here, that we make sure that, that the waves haven't knocked those soft lines out of the shivs, because then it would cut. You know, if it didn't go in those rollers, it would just cut. But the, the, those lines are so strong and the winch is so powerful, it just cut Woo! the deck right in half. We're there, boys. <laughs> All right, so we're all good to go. So once we get it in push gear, then we all go upstairs and uh, we'll get in the upper house. And we use the assist tug to push us in the right direction. So we go down what they call, I think they call it the Navy Channel. I think that's what they call it, or the Army Channel or something like that. But anyway, head I'm right on the bath, you can go all stop and just kind of ride along. We are going to this first one where that guy's coming out, right? We are. I was yeah. going to ask if you knew where So now after the sys tug has got us uh, pointed in the right direction, the wind is going from left to right. So he follows along on the, on the side that if there was a problem, we had a steering issue or if there was an engine failure or something like that, he'd be on the side that the barge would eventually blow down on. So he's over there to protect us over there. And he also knows that we're going to... Uh, the side of the, we actually had orders to go on the other side of the dock, and uh, apparently the the pilot and the uh, tug operator knew they they knew the right side of the dock because we, we had the wrong order. So having him over there was great. And, uh, just cruising along here and as we approach our dock, then we'll slow this thing down again. We can have a better look. We had to go in a hurry. I don't know if you saw that ship on the right-hand side, but they, they had tugs and they were ready to sail. They were waiting for us to get through the channel first.
Okay, so now we have it back to regular speed here. That is our dock straight ahead of us. You can see another dock on the right-hand side, but that's not where we're going. Uh, we actually originally thought we were going to be going, the dock that's straight ahead of us, we thought we were going to be going on the other side of that dock, but we're going on this side here, so it will be a port side landing instead of a starboard side to landing. So my plan for this, because I had an assist tug, was that we just get up there and push her over and didn't really have to get because I haven't been in here before I don't have to you know usually I'd come much closer to the dock and uh, almost shave the side of the dock as I was coming down and put it right in there but because I wasn't I, I'm not familiar with this meaning I haven't done this a million times up here um, I don't know if there are any eddies or anything like that and as it turns out there's outflow from a power plant over here that pushes on one side of the barge and then uh, the wind was grabbing the the house of the tugboat more than I thought so I was really thinking that I'd be able to uh, land flat and that wasn't really you're, you're gonna see that I had difficulty getting the stern over because of the wind blowing from uh, left to right it was really you know the the tugboat was acting as a sail but you'll see us coming over here Maybe this is part of something that I should have uh, sped up as well. <laughs> but uh, I was coming in here very slowly. I figured that uh, not have been, you know, we, we have a pilot and everything's fine, but not, you know, have, not having been on this boat with this barge and certainly not into this berth. Um, I figured I'd just take it nice and slow so that we could always recover if we had to. I've said in other videos that uh, sometimes the hardest parts of these jobs are just having the patience to let everything happen, whether you let nature take its course or you just let everything slow down. It's funny too, when you see people that are breaking into the industry, um, there's a temptation to use a lot of horsepower and do a lot of things really quickly. And then you start looking at some of the old timers that have been around for a long time. These are the guys that never have to tell you they're good, but all of us know how good they are. And that's why they don't have to tell you they're good. And we all look at them and say, man, those guys are incredible. And they do things so slowly. I think a couple uh, videos ago, you guys saw my, my best friend there, Mark, the, the pilot, the maritime pilot, that uh, when he comes on, he likes to do all the, the landings and sailings at the docks. And he just comes in like at half a knot, and it takes forever. And it's so hard to be mentally disciplined not to use all that horsepower. But he comes in, I, I, I think you could land one of these barges on eggs without cracking a shell because he's just so gentle because he's so slow. But being that slow, it's really, really, really hard to control. And yeah, you got to be that good to be that slow. <laughs> so I'm watching this take forever. I'm like, oh my god. It sounds like I'm just making an excuse for why it took so long coming in here. <laughs> now you might notice on the on the port side here, there's a little there's a little teeny boat that runs around, and this little boat is not he's he's not a pirate. He's somebody that should be there. He's he's a uh, one of the locals that does the uh, uh, a, we call it a line boat. So after uh, we get everything tied up. We need to run lines to caissons that we, we, we might not be able to reach. And we drop them down to his boat and he brings them over to the outside caissons. And, and uh, they get a safer tie-up that way. See, there he is. <laughs> he was kind of making me nervous in there. But I was like, well, he obviously knows what he's doing. So... Just take our time.
Well, you can kind of see that I, the angle that I'm at here, I, I would rather be a lot flatter. In other words, more parallel. Right now, I have the bow that is much closer to the dock than the stern is. That's not by design. If uh, I would much rather be more parallel, but like I say, I'm probably twisting against him, so I'm doing a a right twist. In other words, my port engine is ahead, my starboard engine is astern, and my rudder's hard over to starboard. And what that does is that pushes against the, the assist tug. So the assist tug pushes his part of the barge and me while I push against him to try to lift the stern up. And you might see his quick water just when I'll stop there. And that's probably because I don't like the angle that I'm at there. So I'm probably saying, hey, why don't you go all stop? And I'm trying to flatten out a little bit more. There you go. You can see me trying to... trying to. Uh, and that looks like a lot of quick water, but that's, that's because of the quart nozzles there. That, that was one engine coming ahead and the other engine backing down. Of course, you can't really see the reverse thrust there, but... There now. Coming ahead again. And that boat behind us there, that's the pilot boat. Once we're all set to the dock, the pilot boat will come over and pick up the pilot. Here's a look out the front window. You can see I'm getting f flatter all the time. So in other words, I'm getting more and more parallel. Things are looking much better from my perspective now. So I'm not really listening to what's going on here, but I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that uh, we probably have a couple bow lines out, but they're probably trying to figure out which manifold uh, the dock is going to give us. And at that point, we'll, we'll move the barge ahead or back to get it lined up perfectly. So to recap, to recap what, what happened here, um, you may have seen the video last week of us uh, leaving uh, Guayania, and we left with a load of number two oil or diesel oil, and we came out and went clockwise around Puerto Rico so we we're on the south coast and we went west and went up the west coast and all of that was beautiful and then we turned the corner and on the north coast and got all the the uh, easterlies right in the nose and beat into them all the way to San Juan and so uh, it wasn't that bad it was just that the other stuff was so nice it's hard to look at palm trees and beautiful blue skies and 85 degree temperatures and turquoise water and then uh, be out there in six eight foot swells water coming over the <laughs> over the wheelhouse <laughs> like hey this isn't what I wanted <laughs> but uh, that's the one of the good things about this run is that uh, true every time we go east most of the times we go east we have to go into the trade wind so that's a little bumpy but the other half of the time we're going with the wind or we're, or we're in the lee of the wind. So uh, it's very nice on the other time. So kind of feel like we're paying our dues. So right now the guys are tying it up. We're just trying to hold on spot here. You can see the assist tug is just working, holding us there.
while they're tying it up. Just want to thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, this whole thing of uh, me changing from uh, doing the bunker work up in New York and now coming down here and doing more of this offshore towing, um, you know, there's a learning curve with this. Remember that my, my real job is, is not, not making videos for YouTube. That's just kind of a hobby. So my real job is running the boat. So uh, I, I have to figure out how, how to do this and what works. I think we had a really good thing that was, you know, it, it took me a few years to figure out a good process and workflow and be able to uh, do everything that we did up there in New York. And so hopefully it won't take that much longer. But uh, I do think that the more I do this, the, the I'll know where to put the cameras for the kind of work we're doing and we'll be able to talk more and not have to do voiceovers and that sort of thing. So as time goes by, I, I assure you I'll get better. <laughs> I, I, at least one would hope so at any rate. But uh, this might be a real good time to thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, if you like this video, know that the ones in the future should get better. <laughs> but uh, if you want to support the channel, you can give us a like, you can give us a thumbs up, you know, you can uh, write a comment. All of those things help. Or you could subscribe. That's a real big one that helps out. Press that notification thing. If you ever wonder why people always say subscribe and hit the bell, there's a reason why we do that. And that's that if you have, say, a thousand people that watch your video, if, if, if you have if you have two two different people, one person that has the same, they, they, and they're, they're both trying to... to Put out two of the same videos one person has has a thousand views over the course of a week and the other people the other person has the exact same video but they have a thousand views in the course of an hour the YouTube algorithm is much more likely to pick up the one that went in an hour and push it to people who hadn't normally seen it because they think it's trending. So that's why we try to have people watch things as, you know, when they come out, we say, hey, look, you know, uh, I have a new video that comes out on Tuesday. And that's that's why people say, we, um, you know, if, if, if you'd like to subscribe, that's great. If you'd like to ring the bell, that's wonderful too. I'm just really happy with you guys watching. And, uh, Special shout out to the patrons. We have uh, patrons. Patrons are people that really pay all the bills here for the channel. And for uh, some of them, as as much as uh, two dollars a month. <laughs> Others, I think the the highest ones we have is like ten dollars a month. They're people that 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 enjoy the content and get something out of the video, and they want to be part of the crew. You know, uh, as far as helping out, and they they do that, and uh, they. I'll put a link in the description, but you can go over to patreon.com if that's something that you want to do. If it's not, that's fine. It's not for everybody, but for those that do do it, I thank you so much. And all um, well, you guys should thank them too. <laughs> anyway, looks like we're getting to the end of this video, which is kind of good. Uh, just to give you a heads up, the next video I have, I believe, is us... I don't know. It, it would make sense. I was going to say it's us going to St. Croix, but I really think it's us leaving San Juan and going to St. Croix. But maybe we do that in, at the nighttime. And if we did that at night, it wouldn't be able to take any videos. I, I don't remember which video we have next, but anyway, it's either us leaving. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure that it, it was not. It was not us leaving San Juan, but us coming into St. Croix. And St. Croix is pretty special because uh, the wind and the tide go really hard from right to left and you come in with a barge that's hanging off on the edge and it was pretty hairy but uh, you'll see how it goes. Thank you guys so much for watching and uh, hope you guys like it. And be safe and I'll see you guys on the one. I'm gonna go